Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, September 25th, 2023. This is time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython and other fun things. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This will look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. Third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to, Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week, since the last meeting, and what you'll be up to over the next week. Fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, we will get started with community news. So Hacktoberfest 10 starts October 1st. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest has grown from 676 participants in 2014 to nearly 140,000 participants last year. What is Hacktoberfest? Join forces in virtual and in-person events to get your project's pull merge requests done as a team, learn new skills, and meet lifelong friends. This year we're partnering with Major League Hacking to help the community connect. Open source projects maintained by community-minded coders make the modern internet function. Supporting that essential work and the folks behind it is what Hacktoberfest is all about. As in previous years, CircuitPython will be participating in Hacktoberfest, marking some pull requests as Hacktober eligible. Keep an eye on the Adafruit blog for details as October approaches. Fast approaching. And CircuitPython pieces getting ready for version 9. CircuitPython team has been getting key features into CircuitPython ahead of a new version 9. These include updating to the Espressive ESP IDF 5.0, goal is to get to 5.1, and merging changes from MicroPython version 1.20, goal is to get to the latest version, and excellent work to folks who have been working hard on that. And then a featured project making a single button keyboard with CircuitPython, MagicClick S3 is a single button keyboard with a color display and is based on an Espressive ESP32 S3 microcontroller. The display features an 0.85 inch color screen, very small, 128 by 128 resolution. The main control board is currently designed with an ESP32 S3, which supports Wi Fi, Flash, and RAM large enough to hold functional scripts in CircuitPython, and that has been featured on Hackster.io, Adafruit Blog, and the GitHub repository for the project is also public. Uh, this and more is available in our 
weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, mention Anne Engineer on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is the community news. Uh, next up is the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. And this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We will talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So first up for overall, there were 48 pull requests merged by 11 authors, Maker Melissa, Maker M0, Blitz City DI, that's me, uh, Cavs, GEH, D Talbert, Jepler, Tanute, Repad, Biffo Bear, Foamy Guy, and Niradoc. There were six reviewers, Maker Melissa, Tanute, Microdev, Catney, Carter Nelson, and Dan Halbert, and 11 closed issues by 11 people, 20 opened by 17 people. And next we will hear about the core, and Scott, would you like to read the core? Yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you. I'm distracted, so let okay. me scroll up here. Uh, okay, numbers for the core. Eight pull requests merged from five different authors. Maker M0 is a new author, along with Repad, Repid, uh, our new authors, so thank you to them. Uh, we had 18, oh, we have 18 open pull requests, which is lower than we've had in a while, so that's awesome. Um, the oldest is 447 days old, and I think that's the, um, the dual, lun, dual logical unit thing for um, mass storage on USB, which we should get back to because that'd be cool. Um, issues wise, we had four closed issues by three people and 13 opened by 11. So we have a lot of new issues uh, from a number of new folks. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Uh, we have 724 uh, open issues and six active milestones. We have 10 open issues on 8.2x and 55 open on 9.0. Uh, we use these milestones to uh, prioritize Adafruit-funded work generally. So if you're not paid by Adafruit and find something that's not uh, necessarily prioritized, feel free to work on it. We're still happy to support you. Uh, lastly, we have four issues not assigned to milestones, so we have some triage work to do. That's it for the core. Thank you, Scott. And next, we're going to hear from about the libraries and uh, Foamy Guy. Would you like? To, are you reading the libraries? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Liz. Uh, for the libraries this week, we had twenty-nine pull requests uh, merged. Let me, uh, uh, before I jump right into the numbers, also mention a few things. This section covers the CircuitPython libraries. All of those are found on GitHub under the name Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then whatever the name of the library is. This is the Python code that allows your CircuitPython device to interact with various bits of hardware uh, or provides helper functions for completing higher level projects and things like that. So all of this section pertains to that sort of stuff. Uh, we did have 29 pull requests uh, across all of those libraries. There were, uh, from those pull requests, uh, four total authors. So thanks to our authors, including uh, you, Liz, uh, Biffo Bear, and Nerdoc. As well, we had four uh, reviewers, so thank you to Melissa, Scott, uh, Carter, and Dan for the reviews this week. Uh, there is a list of the pull requests merged here. There, If you uh, check out the list in the notes doc, what you'll notice is a number of them are one day old. That was kind of clean up from the patch that was run last week, so a lot of our action uh, this week in terms of stats was from that. Um, and, but we did have a couple other pull requests merge, including uh, one that was up to 130-ish days old and another one that was 80 days old. So we're still uh, working through other pull requests in the past week as well. Uh, that leaves us uh, after this week with 43 pull requests open, uh, the oldest of which is 403 days and the newest is one day. Uh, although I think the oldest one is a draft as well. Uh, at some point, I'll try to look into the stats and see if we can filter those separately. Um, there are, uh, excuse me, there were, uh, over the past week, six issues closed by five people and seven new issues opened up by six people, which left us with 640 open issues, 
19 of which are labeled as Good First Issue, which you can find listed at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website that you can head to if you'd like to start getting involved contributing to CircuitPython. There are lists on that page of open pull requests and open issues. There are also filters to find those good first issue ones if you are newer to the process and want to get started. Uh, also, if uh, that description fits you, I'd encourage you to head over to the Discord where this meeting is occurring. There's always folks around there who are willing to help new people get involved. Uh, rounding it out, we got a couple of PyPy weekly stats for this week. There were Let's see, is that 70,124 PyPy downloads uh, from the 313 libraries uh, in the past week? And the top 10 is listed here if you'd like to see them uh, in the notes docs. Uh, and that's what we have got this week for libraries. Thanks, Liz. Great, thank you. And thank you for doing that patch for mass releasing all those libraries. Um, next, we're going to hear about Blinka uh, from Melissa. Hello, I'm so Blinka is our second Python compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had 11 pull requests merged by two authors and three reviewers. Uh, that leaves a le uh, net total of uh, three open pull requests amongst other repositories. Uh, there were eight closed issues by four people and zero opened. Uh, leaving a net of 78 open issues, and there were 16,235 PyPI downloads in last week, uh, 3,542 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 121 boards. And that's it. Excellent. Thanks, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I will start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I will read your notes when I get to them in the list. So I will begin with a group hug. Uh, everyone's awesome here. Uh, and then next we will hear from Dan. Okay, um, thanks to Jeff for uh, working on the MicroPython v1.20.0 merge. So he made uh, MPY cross and Unix port both work and fix some test fix, fix some um, test failures and there are more to do. But thanks a lot for, uh, and also thanks to Jeff for working with me on, um, when we did pair merging, which is not pair coding, but was kind of that. and. Uh, got a lot of like like very confusing merges done. Like there were eight files in particular that were hard to merge. So I appreciate that. And thanks to, to Scott for doing the ESP IDF version 5.0 and 5.1 merges. Now it's really great to be caught up on ESP IDF now. Okay. Great, thanks Dan. Uh, next I will read for David Glau who is uh, present. Uh, we have a hug report for Lady Ada Jepler and Aaron for the work on Teddy Ruxpin, as I will be trying to do a Halloween Ruxpin, very cool, and a group hug. And then we will hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Liz. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Scott for reviewing and merging the uh, Read the Docs theme fix PRs. There were a handful that Adabot, uh, for whatever reason, was unable to do automatically, and uh, Scott got the PRs merged for those I do uh, very much appreciate it. Thanks to uh, DJ Devin3 uh, Hug Report this week for sharing uh, the mega sized matrix portal uh, or matrix panels, I should say, on uh, show and tell. It's uh, been super cool to see the evolution of that project, and it's very impressive how many uh, panels you've managed to get together. It's super cool to see. Uh, and then uh, thanks as well to Maker Melissa for reviewing the uh, PR for non-blocking marquee on the LED matrix controller library. And that's what I've got for this week. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Uh, and next we'll hear from Jepler. Hi there. Uh, so I want to give a big thanks to Scott and Microdev for the IDF 5.1 merge. That was a long time in coming. And of course, to Dan for doing the review on that. Um, reviews of that scale are never easy to do. Uh, meanwhile, Dan, thank you for the MicroPython 1.20 merge. I know we're working on it together, but you are really doing the lion's share of the work. Um, 
to Paul. Uh, it's been lovely to have you as a meeting host. Sorry to see you go from the rotation, but I understand that sometimes the day job takes precedence over the stuff we'd rather be doing. Uh, Melissa, I'm looking forward to having a chat with you. It's been too long since we've talked. And finally, a group hug. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. And now we'll hear from Katni. Okay, uh, that is fine. Uh, Katni has a group hug for everybody. Right back at you, Katni. And now we will hear from maker Melissa. Hello, I want to give a group hug, or I mean a hug to Dan for uh, reminding me to review from you guys' non blocking marquee PR. A uh, hug to Katni for continuing to participate in the community and a group hug to everyone else. Great, thank you. And then I will read for Michael Pakuska, not present. Uh, Foamy Guy for helping with cookie cutting the Adafruit template engine, which should be ready later this week. Very cool. And now we will hear from Scott. Hello. Um, hug report to Microdev again for the 5.0 update work and also reviewing the PR. Uh, thanks to Dan for re reviewing both the 5.0 and the 5.1 update reviews. And also a hug to Bill88T for the, the 5.0 review and testing as well. Great. Thank you. And that concludes hug reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. And with that, I will get started. Uh, so I was out sick at the end of last week, very unexpectedly, but I'm feeling better, so I'm starting to get back into things today. Uh, I'm starting to work on a product guide for the H USB 238 USB C PD, which stands for Power Delivery Breakout. And what that is is it lets you set the desired power delivery voltage for USB C wall adapters that can provide multiple voltages. So pretty cool, and we'll, the guide will be out uh, for that hopefully pretty soon. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay. Um, so as we talked about, um, we finished reserving the merge conflicts for the MicroPython v1.20 merge. And I committed that to my branch. And Jeff is now has permissions to push to that branch. So we're doing that. I, he pushed a whole bunch of changes. I pushed a few changes. And my work this week is going to try to build some simple boards like Trinket or something and see if I can get them to work at all. And as mentioned, I also reviewed Scott's um, ESP IDF version five uh, merge PRs. So, and those are merged, so now we're, we're caught up uh, in terms of ESP IDF, which is great. Okay, that's it. Great, thanks, Dan. Uh, next I'll read for David Glau. Uh, for non CircuitPython, Teddy Ruxpin week. Received the two Teddy Ruxpin I ordered from eBay, but only one is the right model. Uh, recovered the old code from Lady Ada that is not published anymore. Any links to that. Uh, started to use file and issue and send PR to the Jepler version. Uh, trying to go beyond the learn guide from Erin by trying to change the eye images like Lady Ada did. Very cool. It's, um, they are very, uh, uh the Teddy Ruxpins are, uh, it's wild how, like, prolific they are on eBay. So if anyone wants to work on that project, you definitely can. Uh, and then CircuitPython related, uh, checking my ultimate mouse jiggler with the new version of the USB HID 6.0 library. I feared the breaking change was going to hit me, but it still works fine. And thinking about ways to use CircuitPython and Teddy Ruxpin, like using USB host to change the Teddy content, present, present itself as a USB mass storage and remotely trigger it. Oh, that'd be cool. All right. And then next I will read for DJ Devin, who is text only. Uh, went on show and tell with the correctly working 12 panel display driven by a Matrix Portal S3. Special Heartworks animation for Katni. Lady Ada said 12 is about the maximum I'll be able to run. Uh, we'll start working on a wooden frame to hang on the wall when I return from vacation. Haven't done any beta testing this week due to the merge. Everything is in the 9.0. Alpha will be in a state of flux for a while. I feel it's best to stay clear and let the devs concentrate 
a non point nine point oh merges instead of adding new and most likely temporary bug fixes. Spent most of the week in Fusion 360 and Kira for 3D printing for a jewelry box project that will involve a TFT display, SD card, NeoPixels, and a mirror. And then we'll be visiting family for the next two weeks and will not be as active. Oh, well, enjoy your break, DJ Devin. Uh, and next we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, so last week I ran the patch with Adabot to resolve uh, Read the Docs theme issue uh, and then started working on a way to release all those libraries because now we had a new commit and need to release the libraries as well so the la latest version gets uh, built with MPY and so that the bundle gets updated and all that good stuff. Um, so there were a couple bits and pieces uh, scattered about in various places that did some parts of this and I managed to kind of bring them all together um, to make a tool that will uh, reuse some parts of Adabot to check and make sure uh, each library needs a release and then go ahead and do a release automatically with some preloaded titles and release notes built by templates and things like that. So um, I got that stuff put together over the weekend and then ran it this morning after a bit more testing and a bit more fixing. Um, and then I have uh, PR'd that to Adabot so that we can make use uh, of it in the future as well or um, tinker with it to do other stuff if we need it to. Um, some other stuff that I have uh, in mind to work on this week, I did notice uh, from that patch there was a handful of libraries that reported failed uh, actions runs when it got pushed out. Um, I want to say maybe a dozen or so libraries got uh, failure, so not too bad out of uh, all 300 plus. Uh, but I'm working on uh, going back through those and figuring out what's up with them and getting those fixes put in as well so that those can be back to a passing state. Um, Project that I have uh, in the works is uh, on the IO on the uh, Funhouse. I mean, I'm uh, working on an IoT dashboard that will use the HTTP server library along with the new template engine library uh, that Michael had mentioned previously, uh, and this will uh, show a slick web interface that shows the sensor data from the Funhouse as well as information about the pins, like when the things were tapped or buttons were pressed and stuff like that. Uh, all in a nice little web page, um, just as a demonstration of the server and the template engine working together. Um, aside from that, I also intend to start uh, and submit a uh, an initial board simple test, which was a, a concept that was discussed a couple of weeks back uh, in the weeds, and I want to get uh, one or perhaps a few of those created and submitted in order to iron out any uh, issues that might arise from it. And then uh, we can potentially have that as like a thing for Hacktoberfest that things uh, that folks could be working on if they are not as experienced, but happen to have hardware that um, maybe we don't have access to. So uh, that's a good, cool way, I think, to get uh, new folks involved. And then uh, last thing for me is for the latter part of this week, I'll be headed out of town. So there will be no stream on uh, Saturday at my usual time, but I'll be back next week uh, for that. So that's what I've got for now. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Jepler. Hi again. So uh, for Adafruit last week, I worked on dot clock displays as well as the MicroPython 1.20 merge. Um, one exciting thing is today I verified that with the updated ESP IDF, um, you can set the dot clock of the displays much higher, which just uh, refers to the refresh rate of the display. Um, this is still not well running uh, RAM or CPU intensive code, but it is clearly a big improvement over the previous ESP IDF, which um, is something that we'd hoped for uh, anyway. Um, Let's see, other stuff that I've done over the last week. Um, this next one is with CircuitPython. Um, I had gotten the Unicomp Mini M keyboard, which has an RP2040 built into it. Actually, a, a Pico module is soldered directly onto their circuit board. And um, I've continued enhancing the firmware. And so two big things about it are, um, I improved how um, it detects ghosts and, and allows a few more combinations of keys to be pressed that couldn't before. Um, and I also wrote it so that it does no Python memory allocations after the uh, initial startup. So there's never a GC pause while you're scanning the matrix or sending um, messages to the computer. So hopefully you don't experience even those minor uh, glitches when CircuitPython pauses to do garbage collection. And this is more important than with like a traditional keyboard that can be scanned with uh, the key matrix. 
because it actually does the scanning all in Python. And then the still Python thing, but not CircuitPython, is that I worked on uh, my program called CHAP, which is a program for talking to text generating large language models like ChatGPT. I added some new functionality, including being able to talk to GPT-4, as well as to talk to local LLMs with llama.cpp, um, which is something that like it will run just on your CPU, it will run on your GPU, apparently works really well on current Macs. And the model called Vicuna seems to be one of the best that you can run at home right now. And uh, all right, so back to work. Uh, there's a link to that uh, project. So back to work, uh, I'm basically doing the same thing as last week, working on dot clock displays as my top priority, and then uh, spending time resolving problems with the MicroPython 1.20 merge as I have um, idle time um, so uh, the, yeah, the goal is to wrap up dot clock displays because soon I will be gone for about six weeks. Uh, it's a 50-50 whether I will be at next Monday's meeting. And after that, I will be back on Monday, November 13th. Uh, so it will be a little time away from y'all and I can't wait to hear about what all you did while I'm gone. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Uh, really excited to use the dot clock displays and also hope you enjoy your vacation. Uh, next, we'll hear from Katni. Hello. So this past weekend, uh, I put up one of two new blinds in my office to replace the terrible projector screen-like ones that came with the house. Uh, they never work. Um, if you move them, you you end up pulling them down for 100 years before they ever decide to go back up. Um, they're terrible. And uh, I got new blinds, and they look amazing. I'm really excited. The first one is at least the right size. I ordered them online, so hopefully the second one is as well. Um, and I finished building a custom table for my new tool chest. It turns out putting something heavy on top of a small table, even with solid legs on carpet, makes for a tippy situation. Uh, boards underneath the legs fix it well enough to call it good. I just need to find nicer boards because they're awful scrap pieces of 2x4 that we had sitting around. So, upcoming. My next steps. Uh, so my plan is to uh, start doing um, tech-related and uh, otherwise general information content. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, videos, tutorials, eventually live streams. Um, I'm starting a Patreon. I'm going to be refreshing my GitHub sponsors page. My goal is to be ready to uh, start releasing content in about two and a half weeks. Until then, I have a huge amount of preparation to get through. And I will keep everybody posted on what I'm up to over the next few weeks. And um, I will definitely let everybody know when I'm ready to get started. Um, and then the rest of that is continuing building up my office workshop and uh, putting up the second blinds, which hopefully goes faster, but I bet it doesn't. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. And looking forward to seeing what you do. Uh, next, we're going to hear from maker Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Last week I went through some uh, more Blinkhead issues and submitted PRs for those, and they got merged in. I also went through the uh, repos and updated the documentation and organized issues much better. Um, I started going through Blinkhead Display I.O. code and updating it to be more to be current and much more complete in order to, to support monochrome and grayscale displays. Uh, and this week I'm currently debugging the Blink a display IO code changes I made, and I think I've narrowed it down to something in my palette code. Uh, after that, I'll look at optimizing the code a little bit and possibly adding e support if it's not too involved. And that's where I'm at. All right, very cool. Uh, and next we'll hear from Scott. Hello, uh, Melissa, always ping me if you have trouble with the e ink. I'm happy to help you with that stuff. Um, Okay, uh, updates. Uh, up updating the IDF to 5.0 and 5.1 were merged in last week, uh, so expect to find some issues on ESP. Um, so please test and file issues. However, I want to say that uh, there's a lot of rando ESP boards, and I don't have them all. So if you can reproduce any issues you find on Adafruit, Espressif, or Unexpected Maker boards, that will make it easier for me. Uh, to reproduce them on my end. Um, I don't have all of Unexpected Maker. I don't have all the Espresso ones either, but uh, please uh, try to target those if, if you can. Um, so I wanted to caveat that, because <laughs> there are some random ones that I just don't have. Um, 
I was trying to test the Matrix Portal S3 uh, and re-enable re RGB Matrix support, but I, f I found a crash while I was doing that, so I've got to fix that first. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm doing this week. And then uh, also note that Friday's going to I'm going to be off and on, uh, so no deep dive this week. Uh, as Tim said, he's out. So uh, no, deep dive, no deep dive this week. All right, thank you. And that was status updates. Next up, In the Weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is an opportunity for long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. Uh, and with that, uh, there is one uh, by David Glau, who's not present, so I will read. Uh, the Adafruit Learning System repo has more than a thousand entries in its root, one folder per project, and that makes the GitHub web UI uh, not let you browse it, so I was hoping for a way to fix that and open an issue, maybe, uh, and then there's a note, maybe someone can summarize the previous discussion, what are possibilities, or bring new ideas. Not sure if folks have thoughts, I know mm -hmm. we had discussed it a little bit. I can't speak much to any prior um, discussions, but it is something that I've run into as well and thought a little bit about. One idea that came to mind, it, for me at least, was hosting a HTML page, essentially just hosting our own HTML page that's effectively a copy of a giant list of links to everything that's in the learning guide. And then that HTML page, as long as, as, long as that page will render the entire thing, uh, it can just be a giant hard-coded list of links that gets generated by actions or some other automatic tool every time uh, a new thing is committed. Um, that was the idea that came to mind for me. I don't know if uh, there were other other thoughts originally or... or the other, the other thing we could think about is talking to the Learn team. Uh, if, if it's hard to go from the Learn Guide to where the source is on GitHub, that's something we could probably talk to Justin about. Or, or you know, the learn team, so that when you're actually reading a learn guide, we could try to get you straight to straight to the source file that you that it comes from, rather than um, having to go to that like first page to start. Yeah, I don't think I, mean, I, new, think, I don't think I a think new folder helps you. Sorry, mm -hmm. David proposed a new 2023 folder for for new guides, and like you, it's still going to end up below the fold, which is. Yeah, unfortunate. Um, for, I mean, for for folks coming from Learn, I think it does a good job already of not not sending them to that giant list. Um, they can either they can like click to follow through to a link that goes directly to the folder for that project, or they okay. can just use the project bundler, which downloads everything they need and lets them skip GitHub altogether. Yeah, the actual um, if you click the view on. GitHub link in a guide for code that's been embedded. It brings you to that like code file, and then you can go one level up if you want to see the whole folder. Um, mm -hmm. And I also want to read what uh, Jeff wrote in the chat. Um, big technical problem is that changing a location on GitHub means changing the links in the guide. Right now, I don't think there's a bulk link change in Learn. Um, so, um, yeah, I think. Um, Personally, just as someone that writes a lot of project guides where we're embedding the code, um, I think changing like fundamentally how we're doing it could cause some problems. But I like Foamy Guy's idea of having like a generated list, kind of similar how internally we have the tool to have that snapshot of what the circuit pie drive should look like. Um, so I'm not sure if folks have anything else to say on the topic. It can kind of be an ongoing discussion maybe. I would also note that there's a, there's a go to file link at the top of the list, um, so you can always type in a few characters from the directory name, and you'll go you'll you'll, you'll see everything. That's a good tip. Yeah. All right. Thanks, folks, for that discussion. Um, looks like that is the last in the weeds topic, so we can start wrapping up today's meeting. 
This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, September 25th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.